Hey, hey guys, today I am reviewing and swatching Hollow Taco's Dark Academia collection. Alright, so Hollow Taco's Dark Academia collection was their more seasonally fall collection. Dark Academia is definitely a vibe, so I was down to see what this collection was all about. And features eight polishes. Yes, that's right. Eight. Just off the top of my head, I think that's the most. Because previous ones that I'm thinking of are like the Rainbow Collection, where it's seven polishes. So although the collection altogether is eight polishes, known as the Dark Academia Collection, they do come in like two separate bundles, which is kind of neat how they've decided to do it. So the undergrad like bundle is the cremes and the grad bundle is all of the specialty formula polishes. So even though it is the kind of a fall collection drop, not limited edition, no collection box. First impressions are maybe it's like filling in gaps. It does read quite dark and where it's not dark it's neutral so all that being said let's get into the swatching and reviewing all right starting off with the greens and first the creme green this is described as a dark hunter green and as i said it's a creme and this is like some of the most opaque cremes overall that i feel like i've seen from hollow taco in a while um, I feel like in the past, some of their cremes have kind of, not watered down, but been a little bit more sheer. But the cremes in this collection overall are very opaque. So two coats, I did two coats for everything, um, but the cremes in particular, I kind of felt like I didn't honestly need to do two because they were so full coverage. So here it is with its second coat. And then with Glossy Taco, Glossy Taco will always kind of enhance the glossiness of the polishes. I felt like there were only a small handful that really truly benefited from the shiny part, the shininess of a top coat, um, but regardless. So here's Henry Hunter at a distance, of course. Um, it's, it's very obviously a nice hunter green. Um, some bonus footage of in different lighting, which I felt showed more of the color. All right, moving on to the other green polish for this collection. This is Ivy League. I like this name. Um, so this one is described as a deep blackened green jelly shimmer formula with warm green shimmer. So similar to the other green, they're both dark, darker greens, like on the dark side of things, they're darker greens. As you can see, it's a pretty decent first coat. It's still a little bit sheer because it's got, it's more of a jelly formula you get you get your opaqueness with the second coat so don't worry <laughs> between the two i do prefer this one just because it feels like it has a little bit more dimension to it a little bit more of the vibrant green to it when the light hits it a certain way so the other one is you know obviously a creme and it's dark this one is also dark but because of the the shimmer the lighter green shimmer it helps give it dimension also, the site describes it as an evergreen shimmer, which I do feel is appropriate. And so here it is at a distance, of course. Like I said, it's dark. In this type of kind of overhead regular old lighting that I have, you can, you can see it more. <laughs> and then here they both are together. And kind of a, this setting is a little bit darker, even though it's still light, but yeah, you kind of get the idea. <laughs> Moving on to what I consider the grays, starting with the darker one, is Secret Society. In the close-up shot, it looks more of like a medium gray with the holographic glitter, but it's described as a grayish jelly base with gold bronze beaming micro shimmer and scattered holographic glitter. So the close-up, you could very clearly see the scattered holographic glitters, but once it's on your nail and kind of farther in regular lighting and everything like that, you definitely see more of the gold bronze micro shimmer more than you see the little holographic glitter, which I'm a little bit sad about <laughs> because that close-up shot was really pretty. Despite that, I do like the kind of antique-y 
gold bronze look that this one has. Um, it's also as described as a pewter gray polish. Um, <laughs> so all of the all the, the descriptors for gray and gold and such. And at a distance, you know, medium dark-ish gray, but with some warmth. I also thought that this kind of matched my hair a little bit, although my hair kind of leans more uh, lighter gray, silver gray than gold, but maybe in certain lighting. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next gray. This is foreshadow, and I promise this is not ivory tower. Your eyes deceive you. Actually, my camera deceives you, but <laughs> it's much more clear on the swatches. So yes, this is the other gray polish for the collection, and it is the creme. So like the other creme, very good coverage on the first coat. I mean, look at that. Well. Um, this is described as a medium warm gray polish, which is funny because that is kind of also how I described the other gray. <laughs> also, I don't really talk too much or at all about self-leveling of polish, and that's usually because I don't really have issues with that. I will say that these cremes felt very thick. Not very thick, but they, they definitely felt more thick than past cremes. But I'm not the most consistent when it comes to applying nail polish. I definitely have gained a lot of practice and experience over time. Uh, but especially with new polishes, you know, you're not going to know until you start applying it, which is why I like to do my entire hand. But yeah, so this one and all of them apply fine to me. <laughs> the only weird one might be the Corelli, which we'll see when we get there. But here are both of the grays and you can see one is a little bit more warm than the other, but they're both warm leaning. And yeah. <laughs> Next up is Ivory Tower, and this is an off-white warm ivory polish. So I like when the color of the polish is also in its name. That helps me remember things. <laughs> you can see the first coat after my whole spiel about self-leveling. I do consider it, but sometimes, yeah, sometimes when I'm applying for the first time like a new polish how much polish i get on the brush is not enough like i don't have the right amount <laughs> and so sometimes it gets a little bit sparse on the side as happened with this one but all that being said the second coat fixed that right up but here's a better example of self-leveling, kind of, sort of. I felt like I didn't have enough polish on my second go around, so I went back, but I didn't go all the way. So you can see there's a teeny bit of a line when it's wet, but by the time it dried, and once you put the top coat on, that line is, is gone. Like, I couldn't see it. But yes, so this is the third and final creme, like true creme from the collection. I like its kind of a brighter nature, although, I'm not a fan of the more like lighter nudes and I also thought this one was funny and matched my little cardigan. <laughs> and here it is again with this nice overhead lighting. It's definitely off-white compared to like the background there. But yeah, I had fun with this one. All right, heading back into the dark polishes. Next up is Silent Library. This is described as a deep muted navy frosted metal with silver foil flakes. And I feel like that's all very apparent. <laughs> and also my middle finger here on the first coat is a reflection of me, not the polish. <laughs> I did not have enough, uh, but that's what second coats are for. <laughs> so yes, this is a frosted metal formula. I'm always excited to get more frosted metals since they, to me, are a great formula. They're a great polish, um, but because they don't sell well, <laughs> they're not there's not a lot of them so we take the one we, we can and here it is after two coats and a glossy taco this one i felt like definitely benefits from the glossy taco and then here it is in like you know kind of regular yellow lighting <laughs> and here you can kind of see for me it felt it was so muted navy that it was almost black and I kind of wish it was a little bit brighter, or maybe not muted. Um, I wanted more blue. Like I said, I like the frosted metals, but yeah, there was something about this one that I wasn't, it wasn't hidden for me. 
All right, next to last, this is Inkwell, and this is described as a dark sepia brown micro shimmer formula with bronze shimmer. So another one with some bronze shimmer action going on. Similar to Secret Society, um, they both kind of evoke that like antique look. And although Secret Society had the kind of mini holographic glitters in it, um, I kind of kept getting <laughs> these two confused because they both have the bronze like shimmer look to them and they're obviously not they're they're not the same color at all one's like brown and one's gray but yeah there's just something about that that <laughs> that shimmer that kept messing up my mind <laughs> up close like this it's kind of giving chocolatey vibes <laughs> in a way um, but at a distance as you'll kind of see again to me these this one is reading almost black like it's so dark and relies upon like a certain lighting to get that shimmer that yeah it does kind of look almost black to me so i just wish i think that there was more to either inkwell or secret society even though secret society had that glitter one of them just needed a little bit more and last but certainly not least is Devil's Advocate. This is a blackened oxblood red semi-translucent Crelly formula. So because it's a Crelly, it is intentionally more sheer on the first coat and then it builds as you put more. But like the others, I only did two coats for this. I tried to be really intentional with this first coat. Um, you can see it's a little bit more sheer on my middle finger there. <laughs> Again, that's kind of the nature of using, you know, polish for the first time. And then once you get that second coat on, it darkens it up like really quickly. I like dark reds, so obviously I was kind of looking forward to this one. Um, but again, it was just very dark and <laughs> in certain lighting really just like red, almost black to me. So I chipped my thumb on my other hand and decided to take off inkwell and file them down. And so I was able to do one coat on my left hand and two coats on my right hand to get kind of a better comparison. I do really like this with just one coat. That was more of the color I was looking for. So the only drawback to that is you have to be like very even handed between each nail. And my middle finger on my left hand was a little bit darker than the others, but overall I thought that was that was fine for me. Worth it for that color. And here they are more clearly next to each other so you can really see the color difference. I feel like it's like a plum color. And comparisons between Two Coats Devil's Advocate and Inkwell. I can't tell you how many times I got these two mixed up between the footage. <laughs> All right, so that is the swatching and reviewing of each one. So general thoughts on this is it's a lot of polishes. This is eight and I could understand seven for a rainbow collection, but I don't really know if I quite understand eight for <laughs> a kind of general vibe if that makes sense. I think just the overall vibe is just very dark and when it's not dark it's neutral and so I kind of just wish there would have been at least one polish that was kind of brighter and not neutral. I do think with the colors I chose it does match the vibe that they were going for. It's nice to not only get some cremes to fill in some gaps um, but also to introduce some more specialty polishes. I didn't really have, this is probably one of the few collections where I didn't really have a polish that I was kind of looking forward to. Um, because I do like dark reds though, that one, if I really had to say I was looking forward to one, it would be the dark red one. Although because it's a Crelly, it's, <laughs> it's easy to go from the nice kind of like deep burgundy color that I want to almost black. And I kind of felt like there were a few polishes here that could read like almost black or just very dark from a reasonable distance. Um, and I know we wear polishes for ourselves, but 
I don't know, to me, it's it's nice to know what a polish looks like as part of an outfit or an ensemble or just at a distance. In that same vein, there was also nothing that I felt like, what is this doing in here? I did feel that some were a bit redundant to have, but none that I kind of really felt like, <laughs> get out of here. <laughs> um, but none that are really like my bottom tier. A little bit of a bonus is I think some of these could be pulled from to do more like wintery type of looks. So like the greens and the blues, obviously. Yeah, overall, this collection was a lot of polishes, but easy enough to, to breeze through. I had fun. So yeah, that is the review. Let me know in the comments, did you get this collection in its totality? Did you get any of the bundles separately, or did you just get individual polishes? Um, what did you think of this overall vibe, this dark academia vibe. Did you have a favorite or least favorite polish? I'm kind of surprised that I I feel very neutral about these. None of them really stood out to me, except maybe the, the Crelly. That's the only one that I'll say that I could I could vibe with. Anyway, if you enjoyed this video and this review and swatching, make sure to give this video a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for similar videos to this and then some weird nail art things I do. <laughs> Otherwise, that is all for me and have a great day. Thanks for being here. Bye.